We have less than a day to go till we find out whether Boris Johnson is going to be technically impeached by Westminster Parliament and he's finally published his defence dossier, which has created a bit of confusion inside the establishment. So the first breaking news story for you guys is about uh, the Boris Johnson saga. We're also going to be talking about a number of other issues throughout the day. We have a lot of updates, uh, especially when it comes to tomorrow's essential uh, Brexit vote uh, on uh, the issue of the Northern Ireland Protocol and the Windsor Framework and a number of other updates as well. But first, let's get involved and talk about what's going on with the Westminster bubble. So Boris Johnson uh, yesterday, he finally submitted his, uh, well, I think it was uh, two nights ago, and yesterday he submitted his defence dossier to the Privileges Committee, which are going to be deciding whether he's going to get punished based on the fact that he um, apparently misled Parliament over the party gate. Now, the headline is, Boris Johnson says, I accept that I misled Parliament. So depending on what channel you watch today, like in Sky News, BBC or GB News or others, some are basically saying it as if it was just that direct sentence saying, well, there we go. He, he, he says he misled Parliament on purpose. Done. But if you read through the actual document, we're going to show you uh, the, 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 the main parts of this document. You can see that he basically is trying to find a workaround uh, in regards to saying, oh, looking back, I basically misled Parliament, but it was not on purpose so this is the submission of his uh, defense uh, dossier in the matter referred to the house of commons committee of privileges so what are the important parts so firstly the, the, the bullet point one that says as i made clear to the house of commons on the 25th of may 2022 i take full responsibility for everything that took place on my watch at number 10. the revelations in sue gray's reports shocked the public and they shocked me. I therefore begin it by renewing uh, my apologies to the British people for what happened on my watch. It is now clear that over a number of days, there were gatherings at number 10 that, however they began, went past the point where they could be said to have been reasonably necessary for work purposes. That should never have happened, and it fills me with the sadness and regret that it did so the first part is just apologizing again as he's done over the last year or so i guess but as you continue the second point for example it says as the committee has acknowledged the purpose of this inquiry is not to investigate the matters that were addressed by sue gray this inquiry is about the statements that i made to parliament and what i knew when i made those statements it is of course true that my statements to parliament uh, that the rules and guidance had been followed at all times did not turn out to be correct and i take the opportunity to apologize to the house for that so this is where we, we get to the main the uh, close to the main point of it so it actually talks about the sue gray investigation again saying as soon as the sue gray investigation and the metropolitan police investigation had been concluded i corrected the record i believed and i still believe that this was the earliest opportunity at which I could make the necessary correction. It was not fair or uh, appropriate to give a half-baked account uh, before the facts had been fully and properly established, including into many events about which I had no personal knowledge. Okay, so we get that. I mean, this is the, the official line anyway. The problem I have with the, the whole saga, considering all the other important issues happening in the country, including... Uh, the the crisis of the the banking industry and the, the in, well the lack of stability when it comes to the financial services and everything else is going on. It's interesting that today uh, the the mainstream media's main focus, apart from the metropolitan police corruption, which is also important to talk about, has been mostly on this rather than any other topic. Now, at the same time, we do believe in accountability when it comes to democracy. We do believe in punishment. We do believe we have to hold people to account. But what happened to those? who did a lot of things, but uh, didn't really, uh, they weren't really held to account, including Matt Hancock as health secretary. What happened to any sort of proper inquiry into his uh, decisions that caused so much chaos in the country? Now, let's go to the main point. Number four, Boris says, So I accept that the House of Commons was misled by my statements, that the rules and guidance had been followed completely at number 10. 
But when the statements were made, they were made in good faith. And on that basis of what I honestly knew and believed at the time. I did not intentionally or recklessly mislead the house on the 1st of December 2021, 8th of December 2021 or on any other date. I would never have dreamed of doing so. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, considering it's quite difficult when you hear a defense like this from someone like Boris Johnson, considering that his, uh, his personality in the past has not been completely honest with other things. So if even if at this point he's actually t- telling the truth, that he was just stupid, he didn't really realize that he was misleading Parliament or he broke the rules, let's just say that benefit of the doubt, considering it's coming from Boris, it's just not believable. Um, he might accidentally be right in this situation, but uh, his track record doesn't really help him, does it? So, as uh, Stephen Swinford actually said, a couple of points. So Boris Johnson says that the only evidence that he intentionally misled uh, the Commons is from the discredited Dominic Cummings, and that Cummings' assertions uh, are not supported by any documentation. Johnson appears to rely on an absence of evidence. This, there is not a single document that indicates that I received any warning or advice that any event may have broken the rules or guidance. So he also basically said that um, those who are listening to Dominic Cummings, he's discredited and he doesn't really have any evidence to back up his claims, which is fair enough. But again, that's also another problem. Because even if someone like Dominic Cummings in this situation is telling the truth, because he's also discredited, no one's going to believe him. Boris Johnson defending himself, even if he's telling the truth, no one's going to believe it because it's Boris Johnson. It's a lose-lose situation for everybody in the Westminster Circus. Uh, but again, we are going to be focusing on very more, more, much more important issues throughout the day, including the SNP election, including, uh, of course, what's going on uh, in with the Brexit deal and the mainstream media in general. So the best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.